Hello and welcome to the Master Gardener tree planting video. In this brief video we'll show you how to plant an ornamental tree in your yard or garden and we will start by exploring the roots. So we will wash the potting mix off of the roots. At that point we'll know how deep the roots are and how deep our hole needs to be. And then we'll actually dig the hole, put the tree in the hole, stake it if necessary, and then finally mulch it. So let's get started. So just a brief note for home gardeners. This is what they call a 15 size tree and it roughly comes in a 15 gallon pot. This is too large for most home gardens. You probably want to start with a smaller size tree. They establish more quickly, they have a higher chance of establishing, and they're just easier to handle and also they're a lot less expensive. So while you will often see very large trees planted in municipal or commercial landscapes, for a home gardener, start with a smaller tree. A number five or five gallon is excellent, even smaller, number three or number one. So start with a smaller tree. When planting a tree, the first thing to do is to assemble all of your tools and make sure you have everything ready to go. You see a wheelbarrow behind me or some kind of a large container into which we're going to put this tree while we wash the soil off of the roots. Because that's our first step. We want to expose the root wall so we can see how deep it is. That'll guide us in digging our hole. And we also want to correct any root problems right now because this is really the last moment that we'll have to correct any problems that this tree might have with its root system. Once the tree is in the ground, that becomes pretty much impossible. And then if the tree doesn't establish or doesn't grow, we'll never know if it's perhaps because it came with some root problems. So the first thing we're going to do is take the tree out of the pot and wash away the potting mix. Just remember, once you've done this, you should not let the roots dry out. So make sure you have everything else ready to go, your shovel, your water hose, some kind of a container, and something to prune with if the roots need pruning. Let's, let's get started. We carefully lifted it out of the pot, making sure to support the root ball so we're not just tugging on the stem because we could actually break the stem on a large tree like this. And we're keeping the nursery stake on for now. This is the nursery stake. As soon as that tree's in the ground, we'll remove the nursery stake. But while we're handling the tree right now, you can see how tall it is. We're keeping the nursery stake to protect the trunk. So what we're going to do now is we're going to expose the root system. We need to find the highest root and the root flare. And we also need to make sure that we don't have any roots that are girdling or circling. If we do, we will need to cut those off because the tree doesn't have any way of straightening out those roots. So we have to correct any of those errors right now. Okay, so as we start to wash the root ball, notice all the roots that are wrapping around the tree or taking a, some kind of a weird dive around the trunk. Those are the girdling roots and those will need to be cut so that they don't strangle the tree as it continues to grow. Something like this, and you can see a root that's kind of bending down here. As the tree grows, this root will continue to grow and eventually it will hit the trunk. Um, and it really doesn't have any mechanism by which it would straighten itself out. So we're going to cut it off right here. Then you have another root right here that's, again, wrapping around the trunk. We're going to cut it right over here so that the new roots, which will grow out, grow outwards. That's your goal. Your goal is roots that are growing outwards away from the trunk. So we will continue to wash the root ball. Take it out. It's very light. And so there's some good news and there's some bad news here. The good news is that there's a lot of roots. There's a lot of a root system. The bad news is that we have a number of roots that have problematic girdling shapes and we're going to cut. And then we do have some of these roots at the bottom are tangled together and we'll need to untangle them. And that's fine. You can see how long 
that root system is and it was all contained in that one pot so you leave the tree in a pot too long you will you're guaranteed to get circling roots now we're going to remove some of the girdling and circling roots and again you want whatever stub is left to be pointing outwards away from the trunk because that's when the new roots grow they'll grow away from the trunk so for example we have a fairly large root here that's wrapping around and I will just take that one off and the stub is now pointing outwards should remove the the root that you're taking off I've got another one here and again cutting it off the stub is pointing outwards and we have this root right here cutting it off that off and now you can begin to see some more of this root structure here is a typical constrained root from the growing pot and you can see how it's taken a whole bunch of zigzag turns as it hit the end of the pot we're just going to cut it right here and the root will grow outwards and we're going to untangle the rest of the roots untangle the uh, fine roots and again, here's another one of these roots that has a weird kink to it. And we will just cut that off. You will notice that we will have removed quite a bit of these roots. And that's not good for the tree. But we have to do it in order to correct the, the problem circling and girdling roots. So this is the moment. The tree is certainly not going to be super happy about this. But if we don't do it now, we will never have a chance to do it again. So this is looking better. We'll give it another quick rinse. But you can see, you can see that the roots are pointing outwards and we no longer have the weird circling and curling situation. We have something going on here, which we need to still correct. Now, just one very important point while you're doing this, you do not want to let the roots dry out. So make sure you have a hose with water ready to go and these roots stay well hydrated at all times while you're doing this but i think we're basically there we have remedied the major structural root problems the roots are now set up for success and we have removed the kind of circling overlapping and girdling roots in the process we've lost a lot of root mass so the tree will take some time to establish so don't panic when you put this tree in the ground and nothing happens for the first few months, the tree is rebuilding its root system. And by the way, there's no need to prune anything on top right at this moment. You'll have a chance to correct those errors later on. So now it's time to dig a hole. And the reason we washed the roots and corrected all the root defects in part was so we can gauge how deep our hole has to be. And you'll notice that our hole doesn't need to be any deeper than about six inches my goodness the roots are right here so the very important thing is to never dig a hole that's deeper than what you need because if you do the tree will settle down and then you're going to end up with root problems later on so we're going to dig a very shallow but fairly wide hole and we're going to plant the tree in the hole in the meantime i'm going to put the roots back in this water so they don't dry out Okay, so we have dug the hole. You notice how shallow it is. If I step into it, you'll notice how shallow that hole is. But that's all we need for this tree because, again, we don't want the hole to be any deeper than the root wall. And now is the time to adjust that. So we will put the tree in the hole just for now and we're going to look. And what we want, we want the top of that root flare to be at or slightly above the ground level never below so i put down my shovel and i look at where my root ball ends in fact i can use this nursery stake to position it you can see that we're pretty much there in fact when i remove the nursery stake the tree will be at the correct height so that's what you want and you notice the hole is quite a bit wider than the root ball so if you're a fan of digging dig out, not down. Alright, let's plant the tree.
Now again, I'm cheating. I'm still have the nursery stake attached, but I'm using that to show you the right height. So you want to lay something flat across your planting hole and just make sure that you can see that transition between the trunk and the roots, which is called the root flare. And that's it. Find the flare, plant it there. So we've got the tree. Now again, I'm being a little lazy and I've kept that nursery stake on just to help me hold the tree because it's big. But if your tree is small, you should already have removed the nursery stake. And now we're going to return that soil that we took out of the hole and we've spread the roots nicely around and that's it. Remember, the tree will almost certainly settle down a little bit, but do not stomp or push on it. We will use water. Remember all that water we used to wash the roots? We'll use that to get the tree properly seated in the hole. So let's return some of this soil. And I'm just returning the soil that came out of a hole. There's no magic amendments. There's no magic sauces, secret juices, none of that. Just the soil that came out of the hole. And then I'm going to use water. It's this water that we had used to wash the roots to settle everything in. Okay? I'm just going to use that water and that soil that we washed off. That's fine. We will simply use that to settle everything in. And of course, we piled our soil onto a tarp to make it easy to later put back on. But notice I'm not pushing, I'm not stomping, I'm not doing any of that. There we are. I'm just reserving some of the big clods for later. And I'm taking out the rocks, but that's about it. That's really all I'm doing here. And then again, we're gonna apply a little bit of water from our water that we washed off the roots. And you can see how everything is settling now. Now the fascinating thing is I can actually let go of this tree. And that's really what you're after. We'll talk about staking in a minute, but if you're working with small trees in a, in a home landscape, you may not need any stakes. Now remember, this stake's gotta go. This stake's gonna go five minutes from now. We're going to remove the nursery stake. We'll cut all of these ties. We'll take the stake out gently. This is easier if you do it before you plant the tree, but again, I was cheating because this tree is so tall, I didn't want to risk breaking it. But as soon as we remove the stake, the tree may flop over. So have your actual stakes ready. Something like this. Um, I don't know if we'll need them or not, so let's, let's have the tree tell us. But if we do need them, we want them, you know, some six inches away from the trunk. So not like this. So let's get rid of this stake and see how we do. You want to do this without injuring the trunk. So it's better to cut these off rather than try to tear them off. They're quite persistent. So I'm going to go all the way up and then I will ask for an assistant in case the tree decides to flop over when we remove the stick. Okay. So I'm going to cut the last... Okay, you've got the tree? Uh-huh. Alright. Moment of truth. Stick comes out and I will make sure I fill that little hole. So here we go. Now remember we're staying outside of the hole. We're not stomping on the hole. And we're just going to mud in that hole. And that'll be that. So there we go. And 
and there we are. And I can feel those roots at the very top, which is what we want. We want to be able to feel those roots right at the top of the soil line. Okay. <laughs> you probably only need one or two, but we have deer here, so we thought maybe three would be better. Um, this is what you want, and now we're going to tie the tree to each of the three stakes. You want to tie it as low as possible and as loose as possible without it being able to either bend over so far that it breaks or kind of lever out of the hole. But if you planted it properly, and again, if you're using a small tree, that shouldn't be a problem. So go with one or two stakes for home gardens. That's almost always enough. And again, think about whether you need a stake at all. We can see that this tree can't stand on its own, so we have to have a stake. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a stake at all. Okay, so we have pounded in our stakes. Again, you may only need one or two or none at all. And now we need to tie the tree to the stakes. You want to use something wide that's not going to cut into the tree or rub the bark. You want to use some kind of a little nail or little um, screw or something just to fix it at a height that you want it at. Of course, you're screwing the screw or the nail into the stake, not into the tree. And then you're simply going to tie the tree the way we have it here. You want to tie it low and loose. So if you look at this tree, it's clearly flopping over a little bit, but it's also able to stand on its own. So we're tying it as low as we can, maybe just a little bit higher, maybe right over here. And we're doing it fairly loosely. We want the stake to prevent the tree from being blown over by the wind or knocked over by a person. Um, and, and that's about it. The tree has to move. The tree has to move with the wind in order to build taper and caliper. Taper being that nice uniform change in, um, change in width from the root flare all the way up and caliper simply being the growth in um, girth. So if the tree is not moving in the wind, it's not going to be able to develop those and you want it to develop those. So here we go. I don't have a nail on me, so we'll just improvise here. But this is basically what you want. So everything is a little loose and it's as low as possible. The stakes should never extend past the top of the tree. So if you're working with a small tree, buy the smallest stakes or don't use stakes at all. Or if you have to use a tall stake, then cut it off because you don't want the top of the stake to rub against the top of the tree. And that's it. We only have one step left and that's to apply mulch. So we've reached the final stage of our tree planting project. We have watered the tree in. Again, we didn't stomp, we didn't push. You can see that it's, uh, the soil is mounded up a little bit. That's perfect. It'll settle in as it gets more water. And now we're going to apply mulch. This is the best kind of mulch there is. This is simply arborist chips. It's fresh chipped wood. And we're going to apply a nice layer on top. This will keep the soil cool. It will keep the soil a little bit moist. And eventually, as these break down, they'll release some of their carbon into the soil. So this is not a fertilizer, but it's an excellent way to suppress the weeds and other plants that might compete with the tree. And it's an excellent way to keep the soil cool and conserve water. So we're just going to liberally apply these arborist chips. Um, we won't pile them up against the trunk. We don't want to create a volcano of mulch, but we're just going to apply it all around the planting hole. That's it. And you can't really go too thick on this, but go at least an inch or two inches deep. That's, that's your minimum. You don't want to have any soil showing. And you can make this ring as wide as you want, um, because the, the more mulch there is, the less competition with grass, turf, and other plants there will be. And that is it. You have successfully planted a tree. You want to keep it well watered for at least the first two years. Now this, this actually is an island oak, so it's a species that's adapted to summer drought. 
but until it's established, it will need to be watered. That's a top topic for another video. Just remember, all trees, while they're establishing themselves, need regular water. They don't need very much water, but they do need it regularly. Thank you.